Floats, beaches, and details form some of the releases for the simulation world this week. Hi there, folks. My name's Nova Wing24, and welcome to the Nova app, your one stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So, here we are on a Sunday, the 4th of February 2024, for another exciting week of releases. And let's dive straight into it this week with the release for Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Simulator of their latest world update, World Update Simulator. 16. So this is the World Update 16 Caribbean, and Microsoft Flight Simulator takes a long journey into the beautiful island chain of the world, the uh, tropical ideal destination for many of us uh, that we've dreamed about since we were young, and some of us are fortunate enough to spend time there regularly. I am not one of them. Anyway, uh, this update covers a significant number of islands uh, of the Caribbean, including Antigua, Aruba, Bahamas, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Grenada, Haiti, the Trinidad and Tobago, Turks and Caicos Islands, and many, many more. These islands have all been recreated with custom DTM mesh, along with updated satellite imagery, coupled with a numerous numbers of points of interest. In fact, I think it's 100, yeah, 104 POIs have been added in across the region, along with seven new handcrafted airports by renowned developer Gaia Simulations. So this update comes to us, once again, comes to us free for the community and is available now from the Microsoft InSim Mark. Microsoft Flight Simulator in Sim Marketplace, available now for free. Accompanying with the Caribbean World Update, of course, we saw the release of Local Legend 14 with the release of the Bell 47J Ranger. So for obviously many of us, especially those of us who, who grew up watching MASH and things like that, we will be very, very familiar with the Bell 47. The Bell 47J was a less produced version, which was marketed as, as their executive variant of the successful Bell 47. Uh, essentially, it gave a slightly larger cabin uh with uh, more enclosed space and just generally offered a more luxurious ride, but not only, but it saw more than just service uh, service as an executive helicopter. Uh, this variant has been produced uh, by company Anybuilds in partnership with Microsoft and comes with both a float and a skid variant along with seven different liveries. Uh, whilst it is a classic helicopter, for those of us who love classic, classic aviation, it has been upgraded with some variety bits of mod cons. Uh, so if you are wanting to, if you do miss your GPS, don't worry, there is one in the cockpit for you if you so desire. And if you want to pick this one up, this one is available from the InSim Marketplace for 15 US dollars or your regional equivalent available now. Continuing on now with Microsoft Flight Simulator releases, this time into uh, airport releases. The team over at Orbix released their edition of Bunja Luka International Airport this week, which is a airport that I didn't expect them to reduce. Honestly, I, I, so I feel like this is a bit out of their uh, out of their wheelhouse, but I'm very happy that they've uh, ex going somewhere different. Uh, so this is a Bosnian airport uh, and is a small GA airport, which uh, is, well, no, actually no, it's not a GA airport. It's a regional airport, uh, and its service is provide service for GA as well as providing service for regular passenger services. It gives a highly detailed rendition of the airport as it appears in 2023 with all airport buildings modeled, uh, custom interiors for the main terminal building as well as the air traffic control tower. Uh, provide custom hangar and ground service vehicles throughout to add to your immersion and overall looking pretty cool includes not just some detail not just the airport itself is modeled but also the areas uh, just immediately outside the airport are covered as well uh, with custom aerial imagery supplied as well as custom detailed modeling of the former army base that used to be located next door includes better terraforming of the airport so better terrain mesh is included so our usual sloped and uh, undulating runways and taxiways uh, but also to form the drainage canals which is something that i think sometimes get gets missed in a lot of airports so yeah interesting to see that they're actually uh, added that one in now if you wanted to pick this one up you can pick this one up for 10 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from orbix direct Continue on with the airport releases from the team over at Orbix. They also released this week their rendition of Gold Coast International Airport. So this is an interesting airport for me because it is one that I have personally flown out of uh, many, many, many times, uh, and got a lot of fond memories of from my from my youth. Uh, so this airport is, uh, whilst the description says it's located in Queensland, and that is most 
mostly true. Um, fun fact, uh, the airport is uh, used to be known as Coolangatta Airport, but the airport actually straddles the state border between Queensland and New South Wales. Um, why that's interesting is that that technically means that, the, uh, that during the summer months, that airport actually has two time zones. But anyway, moving on. Um, so you get a highly detailed rendition of uh, Gold Coast Airport, uh, formerly known as Coolangatta, including all airport buildings modelled as it appears in 2024, so the start of 2024. So they are really on the ball, this one. Includes full support for animated jetways uh, with sounds, detailed interior interior of the main terminal with all airport buildings and service buildings models, custom taxiway signs, custom markings on the ground, and overall looking pretty, pretty damn cool. Um, as I said, looking at this one, it has been a couple of years since I've flown uh, into Gold Coast myself personally, but I've drove, driven past it quite a number of times, and overall, it is looking exactly how I remember it. Uh, along with the airport itself, they've also coupled it with some of the major landmarks outside the airport, so one of the major hotels and the resorts are just nearby. So, if you're looking for the, if you're looking for to recreate the experience of flying to this airport, from what I can see, this one is going to has pretty much nailed it. So, yeah. This one comes up with a two thumbs up for me just looking at the, the, the screenshots for this one. It definitely feels like the right airport. Now, if you want to add this one to your collection, you can pick this one up for $16 US or your regional equivalent available now from Orbix Direct. Continuing on with airport releases, this time from the team over at Field Their Simulations. This time they released their rendition of Ontario Airport, but it is not the Ontario in Canada. No, apparently, and I learnt this today, there is an Ontario in California. Why America can't pick, has to pick other cities' names from other countries, I don't know. But anyway, moving on. So this includes all airport buildings, model the airport layer as it appears at the end of 2023, uh, with custom detailed texturing throughout, custom AFCAD parking spots, taxiways, improved lighting, uh, with a variety of custom train object clutter to add to your immersive experience. Uh, overall, looking at the screenshots, looks pretty solid. Uh, the PBR effects during the rain and everything that I expect to see on a taxiway looks pretty much right some of the buildings look a bit rough but overall i think this is going to be a pretty good it looks like a pretty good airport uh and uh, probably more one for those wanting to do uh cargo flights more than passenger flights even though obviously it supports both uh, as it is a major hub for fedex and ups and uh amazon prime so if you want to pick this one up for your collection you can add this one to your collection for 15 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from field there simulations. Moving on to the next airport release, this time for Tucson International Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is a come to, comes to us from developer SX Airport Design. Uh, so not a huge amount of descriptions coming into it from the team there, like absolutely nothing. They copy-pasted the Wikipedia description of the article, but overall looking at the airport, um, it looks like they've done a pretty reasonable job, I would have to say. Uh, you've got interiors of the airport terminals and models, I'm assuming it looks like all airport buildings are modeled there. Jetways supports of the standard Microsoft Flight Simulator jetways, uh, custom buildings, custom ground polys used throughout, and overall blends pretty well into the surrounding scenery. So I can't really fault this one. Um, some of the tarmacs are sort of really sticking out, like sort of a bit of a hard edge blending into the photo reel, but most of it is not looking too bad at least. Uh, the night lighting does look kind of cool. At least they've modeled that. Uh, if you want to add this one to your collection, uh, a bit higher on the price of this one, you can pick this one up for $22 US or your original equivalent available now from Sim Markets. Continuing on with airport releases, this time from a renowned developer FSDG, saw the release this week of their rendition of a Cephalonia Kef Airport for on the Greek island of the same name for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this gives us a highly detailed rend rendition of the airport as it appears in 2023. Um, it's a nice little airport. It's a really interesting one, this one. So it's a combined, uh, you know, it's a regional airport servicing an island. So you get all manner of traffic coming through here, whether it be small GA, small RPT, all the way up to your bigger airliners, as it is a uh, premium uh, sort of you know, holiday destination year round. Uh, this is this forms the part of the what they call their scenic routes edition scenery, which is, I believe is the first of this series that they're releasing. And it looks like from the screenshots that not only does it include the airport itself, but they actually have done some work on actually making sure that the area outside the airport perimeter, uh, including such things as the approach, you know, buildings on approach and things like that, are all included and all updated and 
so to give you that experience of actually going to a destination. So, and again, I really appreciate when developers go that extra mile to actually do stuff like that. And overall, like the quality of the buildings uh, and the quality of the scenery looks pretty good. The terrain meshes look, the terrain mesh looks like it's been customized. Uh, custom ground service equipment has been included. And as I said, all those little extra things around the island of adding those in it makes a real difference. Uh, overall, as I said, it looks pretty good. If you want to add this one, you can pick this one up to and add this one to your collection for 18 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Sim Market. All right, and rounding out the Microsoft Flight Simulator releases this week. And full disclosure, this is a bit of a plug for my product. Yes, this is my product that I'm about to talk about. Uh, so last week, uh, I released a set of nine liveries, but these are not just any liveries. So I have partnered once again with the Royal Flying Doctor Service, and this time I partnered with SimWorks Studios to release a set of nine liveries for their Pilatus PC-12. Now, the what's the uh, difference about these is that these are all all designed to replicate a number of the Royal Flying Doctor Services Pilatus PC-12 fleet. And incidentally, the RFDS is actually the largest operator, a single operator of the PC-12 globally. So fun little fact there. Uh, but the Royal Flying Doctor Service is a really important charity and they provide aeromedical services throughout Australia. And given how big Australia is, that is absolutely vital. They provide, not only do they provide emergency care, they provide primary health care as well. So being able to to move around the great wild outbacks of outback of Australia is incredibly important, and aviation is basically the only way to do that. So what we've what I've done is I've worked with the Royal Flying Doctor Service once again to recreate nine of their fleet, including their latest aircraft that has just been added to their to their fleet, uh, Victor Hotel Foxtrot November Hotel. Uh, so we recreated these aircraft as they appear in their fleet, and the thing about these liveries is that once again, just like my previous RFDS liveries, all of the money raised through sales of these liveries does get donated to the Royal Flying Doctor Service to help keep the Flying Doctor flying. So uh, huge thank you to RFDS for uh, allowing me and licensing me to be able to reproduce their fleet. Uh, and thanks very much to SimWorks Studios as well for creating such an outstanding aircraft. Now, if you want to pick up one of these uh, fantastic liveries, if I do say so myself, uh, you can pick these up uh, from Orbix. And not only can you get a fantastic new liveries, to be able to uh, jet around the skies in with your uh, fantastic SWS PC-12, you can also support a fantastic cause as well. So you can; these are available now directly from Orbix Direct or available from my store, available now. Continuing on with flight simulation releases, uh, but moving into the world of X-Plane now. So the team over at Just Flight released their Duchess Model 76 for X-Plane 12. So this is a fantastic aircraft. Uh, Just Flight have once again partnered, partnered with Serrata Design to produce the Duchess. I have always loved the Duchess. I, I just I have a thing for T-tailed aircraft. Like they they just they have always fascinated me. I just love T-tailed aircraft. You know, I love the Plus PC12. Uh, but yeah, it is a force. So the Duchess is a four-seater twin-engine T-tail aircraft um, with retractable landing gear and has been done by the team over Just Flight previously and they have uh, once again worked with the team at Theranda Designs to bring it this time to X-Plane 12. The team over at uh, Just Flight and Theranda Design have done a highly accurate model of the Model 76 uh, with custom animations, a true-to-life th uh, flight model with true-to-life 3D modeling, so a high-quality 3D model both internally and externally. Uh, full support for the Just Flight um, EF electronic flight bag tablet with custom avionics coded throughout to represent the actual aircraft. Includes a variety of aircraft system simulations, including simulated vapor lock conditions, spark plug fouling, lighting system, uh, functional electric trims, simulated van fan and vent system with realistic blower sounds. Now, that is new. I wasn't aware of that one before. Uh, function cover editor controls and a variety of other things as well. So if you wanted to add this one to your collection, you can pick this one up for 43 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Just Flight. Continue on with Explain aircraft releases this week of the team over at X Hangar released their rendition this week of the De Havilland Canada DHC-5 Buffalo. So I always feel sorry for the Buffalo. I really, really do. Because the Buffalo is the younger sibling to the, uh, the, the phenomenal and uh, historic 
DHC4 Caribou. Uh, the Buffalo was envisaged as a replacement, which and essentially it's a new build Caribou airframe with turboprops instead of piston engines. Um, but sadly, it just wasn't anywhere near as successful as an airplane. But anyway, we get to see it in the flight simulation world now for in the X-Plane world for this one. This one supports both X-Plane 11 and 12. Includes detailed 3D model, both interior and externally, uh, full VR support, custom effects, including rain and wiper effects, a variety of different uh, internal pilot, pilot and passenger figures and a variety of static models, custom st- chocks, removable for flight tags and other effects are included. Uh, overall, um, maybe it's just because I'm not fully, I, I don't fly X-Plane pretty much ever anymore, but I just have to say that it just, uh, I don't know, the it, it, it doesn't look bad, but I have to say that straight up the Caribou from MSFS looks better. Um, maybe we'll see that get modified into Buffalo one day. I don't know. But if you want to add this one to your collection, you can pick this one up for $25 US or your original equivalent available now from xplane.org. Rounding out the X-Plane releases this week, I saw from the team over at Hangar 23, and uh, thanks to community member Will for the heads up on this one, uh, we saw the release of their rendition of the Air Cruiser 6675, uh, which was a interesting aircraft. It comes from a very old, very uh, ancient era of, av- of aviation, the very early days of aviation, uh, and uh, had only 23 of these aircraft were ever built, but it spread across 13 different variations. So this was a back in the time of uh, aircraft uh, building where the different types of aircraft so, you know, manufacturers you know, cycled through designs very, very quickly as so much was being learnt and uh, evolved is in terms of aeronautical design. And this one, this is an aircraft that was uh, powered by a Wright Cyclone engine made famous during the Second World War. Uh, so this is the third air cruiser. This is a, this uh, digital rendition is of the third air cruiser variant, the sixty six seventy five, uh, and uh, is allows for fifteen passengers or, or for the passenger variant, or plenty of space for cargo freight. Uh, so this gives a custom various various options for custom avionics. Mind you, there's not a lot of avionics in an aircraft of this era of this vintage. But for those of you who do miss your GPSs, it does include options for the uh, XP GNS five thirty or GTN seven fifty. If you do miss your mod cons. Uh, custom sound set is used throughout uh, with custom 3D objects used and attached to different liveries as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, fun story, it actually used to be, it was first produced and first known as the P100 Airbus. Now, overall, the, i got to say that this actually looks pretty good. Um, I love my vintage aircraft. For those who uh, know me and have followed me for a while, I love my older aircraft and the aircraft like this always look, always remind me of a uh, bygone era and always love doing it because you actually have to fly it. Um, um, but just weirdly enough, the thing that struck me the most about this when I first saw it was um, why did they include one of the – why was one of the liveries they included for an X-plane aircraft the – one of the fictional airlines from FSX? Uh, that, that was something that just – it absolutely threw me. Don't understand. But, hey, you know what? Um, more power to them. But, yeah, if you want to add this one to your collection, you'll pick this one up for $30 US or your original equivalent available now from xplane.org. Now, as we uh, move away uh, from flight simulators, uh, so this is a uh, piece. Of, this is an interesting release I saw this week, which encompasses which encompasses uh, uh, all the flight simulators. So supports Microsoft Flight Simulator, X Plane uh, 10, 11, and 12, and prepared versions one through five and FSX, because I know people are still flying it. In fact, I know people are still flying FS9. Anyway, um, so this comes to us uh, from this is uh, Passenger Two from the developer of the same name. So this is. Is a real t- in, in their just in their words is a real time passenger and crew application that adds advanced passenger crew and company operation realism to Microsoft Flight Simulator X Plane prepared and FSX um, TLDR. It's a um, passenger like it's a it's a it's an airline management simulator, but where you still do the flying. So you do still, you know, so it actually gives you, it, it's got like some really interesting features in it. So first off, it actually has like boarding functions where you actually see the map of the aircraft. You see people coming on board. You actually have the, you know, you can control the prices of the tickets. Uh, you can do, you know, watch the safety demonstration. You can control the price of the food and beverages and uh, various other things that you sell on board your aircraft. Um, you go up through the ranks of as a pilot and as part of the company and stuff like that. So it's a, there's a lot to it. I'll give it credit, but I, I 
I'm curious to see, uh, but I'll, I'll be honest. I, I mean, I, as I, said, I don't have it, and I'm I'm not really an RPT kind of flyer. But I'm not 100 percent sure if the market has enough room for another one of these tools. Um, I mean, we already have uh, Air Hauler, we have Sky Park, we have um, On Air, we've got. Um, uh, there's at least two others whose names I can't remember off the top of my head right now. And I just feel like, is the market too saturated for this? Don't get me wrong. It looks pretty good. And like the, the prices that you, the fact that, you know, you can set whatever price you want on food and, you know, you can go be, you can go all Ryanair on it if you want. Um, like $12 for a taco. Really? Anyway. Uh, but it's just, it's one of those things where I look at it and go, um, like, I'm not knocking the idea, but I'm just, I'm concerned for the developer because I'm sort of like, is there enough um, space in the market for them? Uh, considering that, that there's quite a few already in it. But yeah, time will tell. But if you want to do experiment with this and see if, it's a, see if it is for you, you can pick this one up for 35 US dollars or original equivalent available now at Sim Markets. All right, moving on to the permanent way now. So the team over at Dovetail Games and Just Trains released their latest piece of DLC for Train Simulator Classic with the release of China Railway's Dongfeng DF-11G. Which is the a uh, May is a very famous uh, train produced for the China for China's national railway uh, for China's national railway system. So this is a five thousand horsepower twin unit semi high speed diesel electric made up of two six axle units coupled together, uh, and has earned the name of Pig amongst Chinese rail fans. I'm not sure whether that's endearing or not, but anyway. Uh, so this comes to us with a highly detailed rendition of both externally and internally uh, of the of the DF one one G. Includes a number of scenarios, includes six scenarios for the Southwest China high speed route, including an emergency rescue mission, and as well as a number of regular passenger service and a free and a free driving scenario. Uh, it also uh, includes uh, high accurate cab controls and with de- accurate diesel engine start sequence, independent light controls, driver input systems, and LKJ signal monitoring systems all modeled accurately. Along with the main uh, train itself, it also includes uh, three pieces of rolling stock and three different versions of the 25T series passenger coats and a sleeper car available. If you want to add this one to your collection, you can pick this one up for 25 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Steam. And finally, rounding out the simulation release news for this week from the team over at Saber Interactive and Focus Entertainment, we saw the release of the Salt of the Earth vinyl wrap pack for SnowRunner. Um, it's a livery pack. Uh, you get uh, four skins for vehicles for the ANK Mark 38, Paystar 5070, Caterpillar CT681, and the Western Star 6900. Um, you can pick this up either for three bucks just for the skins, or you can pick it up uh, and it's included as part of the uh, f- uh, year four season pass available now on Steam. And with that, folks, that does now round out the Nova app for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter and on Twitch. Just search Nova Wing 24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe guys to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.